Eric, what is that one piece of advice that you would give your younger self and why? Um, I think th- um, two. So um, first, especially in our business, um, manage your highs and lows. And that starts from day one and goes if you're 11 years in the industry because the business will treat you good and it can treat you tough too. The second thing was told to me back when I was in college and there's a big difference in our industry and in my opinion of being a broker or an agent versus an advisor. And what was told to me is that short-term greed equals long-term regret. And I think if we can keep that mindset with not only our clients, but the people we work with, the friends that we have, the relationships that we make, you'll be in the business a long time. I have a follow-up question on that. You, Cause you said that managing your lows and your highs. So uh, when we're at our lows, especially if it's someone that is younger and entering their career and it's maybe the, the one, of, one of the first lows that they're gonna experience, do you have any advice for them in general? When you hit a high, don't spend your money like you're gonna hit it tomorrow too. <laughs> that is great advice, Good. thank you. Bronte, the one piece of advice you would give your younger self. I would tell my younger self, and I think this is advice that's really applicable to real estate. Um, Keep a very open mind about what you think you're interested in and what you want to do. Opportunities could pop up that are very different from what you thought you might want. Like, for example, when I moved here and I I was at Baker Donaldson, um, I started doing a lot of senior housing work. Never in my life had I had I thought about doing that. It wasn't something that was was of interest to me, um, but I, I took the chance and, and started doing that type of work and it was incredibly valuable. And the same thing when the, the opportunity to join Southern Land Company came up, I remember a piece of advice that I'd been given um, years prior. Someone told me, you never want to be in residential real estate. Any residential component, it's too much stress, people problems, you don't want it. And I was nervous. I thought, you know, is this really the job I'm going to take? You know, leaving private practice as an attorney is a big deal. Am I really going to risk going in-house and working for a developer um, who does a ton of residential, whether it's single family or multifamily? And, you know, I, I get it. There are people problems, but it's a really cool part of what I do. And so my advice would be keep an open mind. It's better to take an opportunity and try it and see if it's something that you might like than to pigeonhole yourself and think you know exactly what you want and turn down opportunities because they don't fit in those parameters. What I would tell my younger self is don't underestimate the power of being a people person and your personality and how far that can really get you. And I say that because early on in my career, I I struggled with, I, I rank, I, was escalated very quickly into you know the, the, just a corporate ladder and management positions before I even really knew what a manager did and all of that. So I've always struggled with imposter syndrome. And I would say that I try to acclimate myself and my, my personality to fit the mold of uh, particularly like whatever corporate environment that I was in uh, because I thought that that was the the way and you know thankfully I was able to with you know coaching and really understanding know what makes me unique and what makes me you know really uh, make an impact and a difference is me being me and so I would say try not to fit into a mold um, or a box that uh, you think is acceptable and really just be more authentic instead of not so um, advice I'd give my, my younger self, someone nailed it earlier, you know, buy some, buy some shares in, in X. But if I, was, if I was talking to myself, I would, ta- I would say, number one, get a haircut. That boy band, ha- band haircut is not professional, nor is it cool. You're not in NSYNC, so get rid of it. Number two, buy a larger suit, skinny pants and a suit. You're not that guy, pal. Just, just move on with that. From a professional uh, standpoint, I, I'd probably tell myself, everything is relative, right? Today's crisis in three years' time is just going to be a regular Tuesday. And I, I, I think, you know, the position that I'm in right now, I can look back and, and have the perspective of like, man, I, I freaked out over that three years ago. Now it's just, it's just every day. It's just every day. We just roll with the punches. We've got, you, you lean on your network, you lean on your support around you, you surround yourself with some great people. 
and I'm I'm very 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 thankful to be surrounded with the best people. So I, I, I mean that's that's essentially what I would tell myself is is today this this feels like the world is burning down. It's it's going to be okay. <laughs> and then uh, the, I, 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 this is not particularly insightful, but it's something I wish that I learned much earlier in my career is. Ultimately, this everything here, commercial real estate in particular, is a people business. You can be as good as your, at your job, you can smash budgets and cam wrecks, and that's the property manager and me talking, but you can, I mean, you, you can be the absolute best at your job, but ultimately, if you prioritize relationships, success is, is inevitable and it's going to follow. Thank you. And for the cam wreck, shout out to all the property managers <laughs> in there. It's coming. Thank you.